hello friends welcome again i am pradeep kumar in this uh, video uh, we will see the uh, the deformation of the tensile specimen and we will also see the necking of the uh, tensile specimen uh, during de during deformation process as you can see here the, the dimension of the tensile specimen that has been taken during finite element analysis is it has the uh, this length this gauge length having 40 mm width w is equals to 10 mm and this fillet radius is 10 mm already you you would be knowing that uh, after uh, during experiment it, uh, this specimen uh, is uh, uh, tested then uh, we have seen that uh, uh, after after reaching yield point uh, we get a necking pattern like this the specimen is necked and after that the after uh, then load drop of load drop in phenomena has been occurred and uh, the specimen further uh, uh, does not take the load and uh, the load uh, is uh, gradually load uh, drop phenomena has been taken place there and uh, the, the necking of the specimen takes place like this uh, this uh, th th this uh, experimental things we will simulate in the finite element environment using NC software and we will uh, see the necking phenomena in the finite element analysis this is the this is the undeformed specimen and this is the deformed specimen after after broken you can say this is the new test piece and this is the broken piece and uh, before broken you have seen the sufficient amount of cross section has been reduced at this point only locally has been reduced so that's that is, that is this phenomena is this phenomena is called necking phenomena and uh, if we want to simulate this phenomena uh, using uh, finite element analysis software so we have to be accumulated all the things that is going to be happened during experimental analysis during experimental test like when this specimen is is uh, it goes under uh, tensile loading so what happens first reason you know that it's elastic region the second region is elastoplastic region and uh, up to the ultimate and after that after ultimate if you go in depth then the another mechanics is known as damage mechanics so in that one the voids nucleation phenomena void growth phenomena void coalescence phenomena it has it is up it has uh, uh, happened during this during this process after yielding and during this process the local necking local necking uh, process has been appeared and uh, in the diamond mechanics the consistency of the volume means del v is equals to not zero exactly it is not zero because the consistency in the volume does not follow during the diamond mechanics because the new voids has been created and coalescence of the voids happen so this uh, the so the uh, we have so the complexity of uh, such a phenomena is actually has been modeled in this uh, video uh, we have i've taken the damage mechanics model of gerson model it is called gerson tevagadra nidelman model where all the damage phenomena has been incorporated like void nucleation void coalescence and uh, void volume void facts failures all these phenomena has been incorporated due to this incorporation uh, if we will simulate up, up, up to 4 mm of uh, this displacement and then uh, we uh, we take the load we take the reactions from uh, this uh, applied load or you can say that we we, we will plot the displacement uh, versus the applied load so in reality in experiment you have seen that up to parti particular limit the load drop takes place so we should also be uh, be be found after this uh, um, 
after this ex this finite element analysis and we will plot this load versus displacement uh, the plot of the load displacement after this complete analysis and uh, we will see the load drops will take will take place and this is the this is the uh, after testing you after simulation finite element simulation you have seen the exactly the necking uh, a necking uh, of the specimen uh, takes uh, place at the center of uh, uh, this specimen as is here is uh, here in the in the tensile specimen which is uh, which which is this is the image after the broken piece so you you can see this is the new test piece and this is the broken piece and the necking has been taken place at the center of the specimen okay so here we are going to use all the complexity of the uh, models so this is actually simulated by the using elastoplastic material model and along with gtn damage model okay i have taken the gtn damage model to simulate this necking phenomena and failure phenomena of this specimen so so let us start by one by one procedure so first we will uh, we will model this specimen so modeling of this specimen has been done at this uh, in this space claim but before that we have to enter the uh, material properties so go to the engineering data Okay, go to the engineering data. Okay, so we have connected here. So you can go to the engineering data. And here you can see I have uh, formed three types of material data. First one is elastic. Second one is elastoplastic, and third one is the structural. It's, it is actually structural. There is a name, but the name is actually this is the the material model which is incorporated the uh, Gerson damage model. Actually, uh, we uh, actually there is a one specimen. Hmm, okay, but we have taken the three material model, three types of the one is elastic. Elastic means in this. Uh, material model we have taken only the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio. In this second model, elastoplastic model, we have taken along with this uh, uh, this elastic isotropic elastic property with a multilinear isotropic hardening with this curve, stress strain curve. You can see here. So in this elastic material modeling, we I don't have taken this complete expression curve, but in but in this plastic material modeling, elastic plastic material modeling, I have taken the complete stress strain curve. But in this is in this structural steel that you have seen here by, by the by the name that is here, I have uh, uh, and how it can be taken, uh, how we can uh, get this multi-linear isotropic hardening so go to the plasticity model okay here multi-linear isotropic hardening here so you can drag and drop here and for linear elastic this is isotropic linear elastic okay you can simply drag and drop here no problem and uh, okay so but in this case one more additional thing has been incorporated elastic elastoplastic complete stress strain curve and the third thing is that the damage model has been also incorporated here that is called gerson model the gerson model in the gerson model you can see here these are the three parameters nucleation there are two things nucleation stress control and nucleation strain control so we have taken a strain control the nucleation okay so in this one uh, the first thing is required yield stress yield strength so we have taken 590 and the initial porosity 
that is we have taken 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 that is, is this is the material parameters and we must have this parameter after doing experiment or after comparison of the experiment all these things that we we need these parameters this is the first uh, uh, tabagadar and willman constant second third okay then <coughs> after that after that this is the nucleation strain control here we have to put the nucleation porosity nucleation porosity we have taken 0 0.01 mean strain is 0 0.3 and the standard strain strain deviation is 0.1 and is the collision parameter that is we have taken the critical porosity is 0 0.08 and failure porosity is 0.2 okay so all the data you will be getting here all these data you, you will be getting here all the data so so this is the material model so this is there are three material models we have taken it is one is completely elastic only elastic second one is elastic as well as plastic and third one is the elastic plastic plus damage model so so in ho in, in complete tensile specimen there are they, we will divide the three regions where in one region we will apply only this model and in second region we will apply only this model and third region we apply this model so why we are doing that we will discuss uh, uh, after some time uh, after few minutes later so but we can understand we have created the three material models and this is important and this is important in aspect of the solution aspect accuracy aspect okay convergence aspect because this you know that this is the elastoplastic material model the convergence is, is would be very critical so this is a, you can say this is another trick so we have to have these three material models to get the better convergence value to get the better results and in less time so this is the strategy that is followed uh, by most of the engineers most of the experts so 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 you must be uh, you must follow the expert suggestions i recommend you Okay, so after creating after creating this geometry in any geometrical modeling software you will create the geometry either in ANSYS geometrical software or any other SOLIDWORKS that any way you can create it and then import after importing in the uh, finite element software in, in ANSYS so go to the go to the model and uh, and at the model it says in the geometry you just change it the axis symmetric because there are so many things plane stress plane strain so just, just convert the axis symmetric problem okay so you can see here there are three regions that i have created this is one region this is the second region and this is the third region now you would be, be thinking why we i created three regions however this is one material but i have taken three created i have created three regions this is the this is the uh, region um, uh, is and first thing uh, I have I have model the axis symmetric model this is only two D model so this is the axis of this specimen and uh, and first is axis symmetric and second is half of that so we will apply first boundary condition the axis symmetric and second boundary condition which is the plane symmetry. So we have to apply two boundary conditions. Let's understand this boundary condition. But before going, just understand. Let's understand why I have created the three regions. This is very simple region. First the region is that when we apply in reality, when you apply a force here, so you know that this region is not because this region is a clamp region. This is not going to be deformed after the elastic limit. Okay. So in reality, if it is not going to going to be deformed after elastic region, then why we are going to use this elastoplastic material and damage model, damage elements to incorporate here? So we are intelligently we uh, understand the physics of the problem and we don't mo we understand that it, it it need not necessary to model the elastoplastic elements here. It is necessary only to model it by simple linear elastic element so that is that's why okay now come to this region after that one this is the reason which can undergo after this loading in a plastic region so 
we have modeled this region as a plastic region this is the reason which is the very critical reason which may undergo the damage of this uh, material so this this reason will go under the damage of uh, means it means this uh, material the reason of this material will damage this material the reason of this material will fail uh, we are knowing we are knowing by the by the experiment by the experience all these things we are we are knowing that this is the reason which is going to be failure reason so so we need to model this reason with a with the damage model because damage model will incorporate all the things necking and and failure of the elements and the, the dropping of the load phenomenon and all these things so this small region i have modeled with a elements which is incorporated the all these material models because finally because this is a virtual region and whatever the el proper material property you define to the elements so that will that would work according to that if you have make a made a element in this region and you have defined with the material of linear elastic material so that element is not going to deform in the plastic region if you define in this the region the elements in this region is, is it will go and in the elastoplastic region so that material will go up to the that region it, that material will not going to damage in any how because you don't model it by damage model but in this reason we have incorporated the one additional mo model is the damage model so in this reason the element will fail after certain load and we will see the drop in the loads very just after this simulation okay so the meshing of this three regions has been it would be like this this is uh, first region this is second region and this is third region okay and uh, if you are modeling in the space claim just then just go to the in space claim and in the uh, in the uh, in the space claim uh, you can have that is uh, in, uh, in topology and uh, you can merge the all the this topology so you need not to be required for this uh, contact if, let, if you are modeling in other software then you can use this contact which that is in between all this so it will be bounded context so no nothing to affect all in this case okay now come to the boundary condition uh, here we have applied first boundary condition is at uh, this end okay at this end here first boundary condition and that is the, this boundary condition is uh, utilized to be plane symmetry so you can see here the x component is 3 but y component is 0 in this direction it means this is a plane symmetry okay because this is a half of the complete space Next is the next is the displacement control loading. We have applied 4 mm of uh, displacement in this direction. Okay. So you can see here. You can see here. This is the, this is the 4 mm. This is the direction of the displacement. Is this one in the y direction, and uh, here the plane symmetry condition is applied. Okay, and in the analysis setting, we have to do one thing. We have to on the large deflection. We have to just you know, there is a two things on and off. We have to on the large deflection. Of the, okay, we have to on the large large deflection of the large deflection. So, so because of that one, the solution bar uh, checked one. It was before it was checked and then it has removed because of that something I, I did it but but the thing is that don't not to worry about that just if you are uh, going with the initial simulation just the important point is on the large deflection okay and step and time you can have 100 seconds 50 seconds 
as you wish it is the thing of conversion okay and already we have taken care of so many things so so in the less uh, number of steps this uh, problem will be converged it's not to worry about that one okay so <coughs> and then this is the analysis setting and uh, after that you solve it and after solution you will get the stress you will get the stress distribution in this uh, complete specimen so as our uh, our intuition that uh, this reason is not going to be in the plastic reason so you can see here if you see the uh, plastic strain so in this reason the plastic strain is zero okay so if the plastic strain is zero so there is no need to model the elastoplastic material model because sometimes that creates a lot of the problem and sometimes it creates the difficulty to seem to converge the problem and uh, at this time there is no as a sufficient time to allow me to explain all the things but just as a thumb rule you can uh, do like this and next is this reason somehow some portion of this reason is going under the plastic reason so that's why we have taken care of as per our intuition this is going to be like this so that's why we have taken care of all the things to more that's why we have modeled this reason by the elastoplastic material model and this reason after the end of this reason this reason is actually you have see here uh, this reason is the necking reason this is the necking portion of this specimen so you see this is the necking of the specimen and uh, this necking phenomena is has been uh, incorporated in the finite element model because this uh, uh, how many elements we have taken you can see one two three elements in the three three elements is actually having the damage model Mat material damage model it means one two three this is one element is elongated so much you can see here this is elongated so much and also the necking has been taken has been uh, um, taken place here at this point at this reason as as, as per the reality you have seen the broken specimen and the broken specimen is something is like this one so so here after that one we can uh, export the force reaction force from here okay and uh, also the displacement that we are getting from here reaction force as well as displacement and after uh, uh, after exporting this Uh, force and displacement okay after exporting the force and displacement uh, we can get we can get the uh, load versus displacement force how do we get this is uh, this is the total force because in the force in the other direction will be zero just right click it here and export this data if we export this data let us let i am exporting at anywhere let you can see let let i am exporting at the desktop this something i am to do okay then all the data has been in, uh, exported at the desktop and uh, then from the desktop you can take this data and plot in the excel file and after plotting it you will get you will get the the load versus displacement data and uh, that will be definitely that will be definitely uh definitely uh in in the load drop phenomena the first will rise and then it will go to the down and uh, so so this is the finally the procedure of uh, doing the damage analysis of uh, uh, of tensile specimen and the fracture of the tensile specimen so 
so actually this is the reason where the specimen has fractured okay so so you can you can have these things and also let you want to let you want to expand this axis symmetric and you want to see the complete 3d geometry then what you have to do go to this uh, project schematic and then go to the option okay and then in the appearance in the appearance and uh, in the appearance here 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 is the beta option here is the beta option and just uh, click the beta option and click ok after that go to the model and then click on symmetry and here at the place of partition coordinates click on the 2d axis symmetry okay and delta theta is equals is meaning of delta theta is the portion of uh, symmetry like uh, i'm showing you the results this is the complete formation of the body you can see here this is the this is the axis symmetry problem problem so, so here after axis symmetric then you can see the complete model in the 3d format okay. so, so in this way we have seen how to model the uh, the fracture of the specimen and how to model the and how to model the uh, Gerson model in, in the finite element analysis along with the no, along with the elastoplastic material model. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, if you have any doubt, please uh, uh, let me know. And uh, if you like it, this video, please subscribe to this video. Um, and then in the next video that i will upload you will be notified by your subscription so thank you for watching this video